So my apologies, I know it's been a long time since we've seen any type of uh, Kit Fox on this channel. In fact, I don't know if I've ever covered a Kit Fox, but I'm in Broussard, Louisiana in the bayou. I'm gonna check out Ben's Kit Fox 7. Hey, I'm Ben Bell. I'm building the Kit Fox Series 7, powered by Continental O200. I've uh, been working on it for a year and three months now, and looking forward to finishing it up. All right, Ben, so obviously uh, this comes already pre-welded and some of the things done for you, but where did you start in your project uh, many months ago here? So day one, as you said, it comes pre-welded, but uh, after getting it out the truck, couldn't wait to put the landing gear on, the wheels, and flip it back over and take a look at it. So basically started by putting the gear on it. Okay, so right away it looked like an airplane within uh, within a, a week or so of getting it home. Yeah, and actually moved fairly quickly from that point. Started on you know the control mechanisms, and it wasn't long we started doing fabric work and paint. Okay, so just kind of spend a minute and walk us through the actual procedure you did of so after landing gear, like what steps did you go through through your build process to to get to this point? So it was landing gear, and then um, like I said, all the control mechanisms, all your push rods, tubes. Um, I had already pre-built the panel, kind of fit the panel to look at it. Uh, from that point, we started fabric work and paint. Well, I guess the first thing is, it, can you explain to us what the difference is from the regular kit to the quick build option, which you said you, you opted for on your wings? Yeah, I figured the total amount of hours it saves you, but it's quite a few. So if you order a standard build wing, you're gonna get tubes and a box of wooden ribs and you gotta set up jigs and set wash out and glue all that stuff together. Whereas the quick build wing, your front spar, your rear spar come all glued to your main ribs. Your false ribs are mainly, mostly in there. You gotta put a few of them in. Okay, so how, so how we see it here other than the tank being in, or was the tank already installed too? So the tank was not in. So basically okay. you get, um, all right, so you set the wash out, you set the dihedral, the sweep. Set the sweep to zero degrees. Um, fit the fuel tanks, glue the leading edge on, the pitot tube, varnish all the wood, and at that point it's almost ready for fabric. So, so very, very, how many hours do you think you put into this? Like a couple weekends to get to this point? The most stressful part was actually fitting the wings to the fuselage and setting everything because you got to drill. You drill the whole one time, you got to get it right the first time. So, right, right. And, uh, I probably got two or three weekends in, in the wing so far. Okay. Now the D section or leading edge of this wing is a little bit unique to me. Uh, it looks to be like some type of an extruded plastic. What did, what did you do with, with that or what is it? It is, it's, it's an extruded PVC or plastic and um, they give you a, a jig that you actually get the, the angle correct on and then you glue it in place. Okay, and what type of glue are you used throughout to do the ribs and that leading edge? So Kit Fox uses a glue called high saw. It's a two part epoxy structural epoxy. So one thing that's always really fun and interesting to me is to visiting, visiting builders like yourself. Mm -hmm. And everybody always has like some unique way of doing something and uh, a popular option of building uh, with your fuselage or the wings is a rotisserie. And I see you have built your own rotisserie. So what is it made up of and uh, how'd you come up with it? So it's made of uh, just two by sixes, two by fours and PVC pipe. And I think I saw it on Team Kit Fox forums. They actually gave you the dimensions and the shopping list and I went to Home Depot and put it together. Okay, okay. And you have a, a full rotation ability with it? I do. Yeah. All right, so I got them drilled. You can basically set any angle you want, pop a drill bit through it and like here. So you, you can lock it at 90 degree increments or you can drill many more holes and... Exactly. It'll come in handy when painting for sure. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com, Aviation Youth Magazine at AviationUSA.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, 
aviation merchandise, and so much more. So Ben, looking around your aircraft, uh, you've done an excellent job of fabric work. Uh, is this your first time? No, I've done quite a few projects in the past. Um, is it all the same system or is this an, a new system and which system did you use? I always use polyfiber system and an aerothane paint. The aerothane gives you more gloss than the, I think it's called poly sprays, a more flat tone. I like the aerothane. Okay, so on a project like this, um, what's a good starting point for getting the fabric on? Like, you know, front to back or do you work on the bottom or do you, you wrap it? Explain the process. Uh, YouTube videos, watch a lot of YouTube and then, um, but basically to answer your question, you start on the bottom and then each side and then the top. Okay, so each panel is an individual cut and then you glue it to the, uh, the tubing essentially? That's correct, so when you wrap the bottom, you'll, on your left and right, you wrap the fabric around the tube and then when you wrap the side, it goes around and you finish it off with tapes, finishing tapes, which are these. Okay, and then once you do that, um, what's, what's the process? Do you do a coat of, um, of silver and for the paint, what's, what's the, the, the sealing and the paint process? So after the final heat shrink to a certain temperature, you go with a, what's called poly brush. It seals the fabric, it gives it that drum sound. That, and then after that, you go with the poly spray, which is your silver. Okay. Some it, wet is, sanding and then your top coat. Is this not heated at all once you put it on there to make it stretch tighter or no? Yeah, you actually glue it on there fairly loose and heat it to temperature. Okay. You got to be careful. It's, it's tough. If you overheat it, they'll actually bend the tubing. Wow. Did you use um, like a heat gun or an iron to do that? Calibrated iron. All right. So we're going to back up just a second. I want to ask and share with everybody um, your experience in the aviation world of kit building, what you've built in the past, and then what made you decide to build your current project of the Kit Fox. Well, I started at an early age with ultralights and um, fell in love with aviation. And at one point I had an Avid Flyer, a Mark IV. I really liked that airplane. I sold it, um, built an RV-8, and then family life happened, got married and had my daughter, and she's at the age where it's time to start teaching her to fly, so I figured a Kit Fox would be a good airplane to do stuff. What is the, the other mission for the, the Kit Fox? Uh, low and slow and, and no rush to get anywhere, you know? Just fun flying. Okay, and, and what are you expecting uh, performance-wise with your configuration, both on uh, the, the slow end and then the, the high end. It's been a while since I've uh, researched the numbers, but I'm hoping for a hundred mile an hour cruise, you know, five gallons an hour or so, and three or 400 foot takeoff and landing distance. I'll struggle more with a heavier engine than a Rotax, but that's okay. For my mission, it's gonna work well. All right, so speaking of the engine, I, I doubt that is the, uh, the typical, you're more atypical going with this O200, although we have seen uh, recently that people have installed the O200 on the Kit Fox, but what made you go with that option and uh, what have you done to it to make it yours? Um, I was, either way I'd be fine with the Rotax or Continental. I kind of prefer Continental because I'm not trying to build a competition airplane. Um, so the Continental popped up on Barnstormers and it was very close and uh, it seemed like a good deal. So I bought it and it's fully supported by the factory. They offer the cowlings, the engine mounts, everything. Okay. And then you got some uh, very, very fancy looking exhaust here. Talk to me about how that came to be. So I wanted to design a four into one system, but I just lost time. I didn't have the time to do it. And uh, from the RV days, I remember Betterman. So I called Clint at Betterman Exhaust and gave him a few measurements and he built this for me and it fit perfect the first time. So what kind of performance do you think you'll see by upgrading to a more open free flowing exhaust like this? I don't know exact numbers, but um, I know it'd be better than like a Cessna 150 Y pipe with mufflers on it. Okay. It'll breathe a little better. And, and surely it'll sound better. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so while we're at the front of your airplane here, let's, let's talk about you've got a very nice looking three blade prop. Uh, what is it and explain the, the mechanics behind it. It's a Duke three blade prop. It's manufactured in France. It's 100% um, carbon, uh, forged carbon, carbon hub, and um, it's a quick adjust. You turn one screw behind the spinner and all three blades pitch accordingly at the same time. What size prop is this? This is a 73 inch. All right, so working our way to the inside here, you said you jumped right in after getting the uh, controls in to basically starting to wire in your panels, kind of already started. Did you have the panel pre-cut and assembled mostly outside the plane? I did, I built the panel before the plane actually arrived. I was just that anxious to get started and um, 
I had it in the house and powered up on a power supply and I didn't initially wire it, but I wanted to fit it in here and make sure everything was going to fit properly and it all seems to be working fine. So explain to us what all do you have in here moving kind of like left to right through your panel? What's, what's installed? So this is a 10 inch Dynon Skyview. I got the Garmin 220 Com, I believe it's called, a 335 transponder, Garmin as well and then the iPad for four flight. Uh, looking around, I'm not that familiar with the Kit Fox. You got several different uh, uh, levers and, and, um, and stuff here. What's, what's going on with that? So starting at the bottom on the center console, we got elevator trim. Um, this is your flaps or flap arounds. And then we got the fuel selector and uh, adjustable rudder pedals on both sides. So Kit Fox doesn't have a sliding seat. You, you can adjust the pedals. All right, so this is not exactly the standard gear. Talk to us about what it is and how you acquired it. This is Grove landing gear, which Kit Fox does offer, but uh, uh, I went straight through Grove and ordered it three and a half inches taller for a little more deck angle. And just for looks, honestly. <laughs> I may regret it when it comes to taxi time, but it's okay. I like the look of it. So there's more deck angle on the ground, so you're already like in a position to fly or you want to see how much prop you can put on this thing? Uh, more of an angle of attack thing. Okay. Get it a little slower. Okay, now being longer, you're going to have a little bit more of a spring to this, essentially? I don't know. Hopefully we'll find out soon. All right, so why don't you show us how you climb into a, a taller kit box? I use the tire as a step. So while you're in there, about how tall are you? I'm about six foot tall. Okay, so you're, you're a tall guy and you've got pretty good headroom above you. Right. And you, again, adjustable, which I can see your feet wide open now because the, the boot cow is open. Right. You got, your legs are stretched out, so you've got all kinds of uh, leg room in this thing. It's much more comfortable than a Model 4 or 3 or earlier. Okay. So you've had a chance to at least climb in one of those other models I, I have and owning an avid flyer in the past it was much tighter than this nice okay so plenty of room and then the visibility you've got skylights and you've got basically glass all around you so your visibility is going to be amazing in this correct it's, it's glass everywhere including the turtle deck which isn't on yet do you have any plan knowing that to put some type of sun visor so you don't uh, bake your your head in the certainly okay yep Go also went for the bubble door option which gives you some more elbow room all this is all right so talk to me about what is a standard kit fox tail wheel and what you've got here as an option so kit fox offers both they offer a, a steel leaf system or the shock system i chose this because i need a little more tail weight anyway because i've got a heavier engine so i figure if i'm going to add weight i'm going to put usable weight okay. this comes from Air, airframes alaska i think it's called a t3 okay Gives you a little bit more of a, a, a saving grace on those hard landings. Exactly, or, or rough taxiways and whatnot. And, uh, yeah. Like I said, I need to wait back here anyway. So Now that, that makes sense, a little bit of ballast and all the way at the tail means just a little bit of ballast goes a long way up to the nose. Correct, that, over that long distance makes a big difference, yep. Now are you putting, where are you putting your battery? My battery's about midway between the seats and the empennage, the tail section. Okay, so another another way of getting some ballast moved around. Correct, and I won't know the, I mean, it's it's mounted, but I won't know the final place until we do weight and balance. All right, so I won't hold you to this, but when are you thinking you might have this uh, ready to fly, and where are some of the first few places that you'd like to fly to? Well, I'm hoping to have it finished within a, a year or so, and uh, I just want to fly local and have fun. Okay. Another question I like to ask people all the time is uh, two things. What was the most challenging part of your build so far? And what was the most enjoyable part of the build so far? That's a difficult question. I, 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 you have challenging days, but I, overall I enjoy the whole experience. The, the windshield's a little, makes me a little nervous. I guess the most exciting part uh, was the day we started the engine for the first time. You know, you see the airplane kind of come to life. It gets you motivated to work on it some more. All right, so if somebody wanted to follow your build and your progress and to see when you're finished, where are you posting? I post updates on Instagram. You can follow me at LA Kit Fox. All right, we'll check it out there. Thanks for the tour today. Thank you. Thanks for taking a tour today with us and Ben's Kit Fox Series 7. 
Do us a favor, hit that like button. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.